Hey there, everybody. I'm Avery Travis, a fan of South Plains politics. Here's your talking points this week. A new database is making sure rape cases are not forgotten. We're going to show you how it works. And rural broadband is coming to more South Plains counties. From the studios of KMAC Television in Lubbock, your local election headquarters. This is Talking Points with Brian Mudd. Sponsored by Capital Mortgage Services. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Also this week, the only federally funded addiction recovery center in the area has closed its doors. As KMAX Tori Larned reports, the closure has former employees and recovering addicts really concerned. You get so adapted to that environment and so adapted to be feel safe and everything else. So like whenever they say, hey, you got to go. Just kind of like, wait. <laughs> for 25 years, Managed Care Center for Addictive and Other Disorders helped thousands struggling with substance abuse. Tawny Barnes says it helped get her life back on track. It was very surprising, very shocking that they, they closed. Former employees say the federally funded institution had financial trouble. It's not easy being there. As an employee, um, financially, uh, we did take a big hit as a family. Um, we weren't paid for a whole month. Some eventually even laid off. Myself included, and they came kind of in, um, in stints. Chris Wyatt, who is now the assistant director of Beehive Recovery, says when they shut their doors, his ministry stepped in to help. Not have the fear, not have the worry of where am I going to go or what am I going to do or if I'm, am I going to have the opportunity um, to stay sober. While he doesn't know what's going to happen next, he says Lubbock desperately needs something to replace managed care fast. For people that may not have um, insurance or um, a lot of extra money laying around, to be able to have a place to go um, when they need help as well. No, honestly, I didn't have insurance and all that stuff. Uh, managed care, they just accept you in with nothing. It's very much needed in this community. Tori Larned, KMAC News. Managed care seems to blame financial problems on the state agency Health and Human Services, at least at some point. A former employee telling us they once received a letter saying they've experienced delays with providing payroll to its employees. This is due to a funding system problem with the Texas Health and Human Services Commission, not directly related to Managed Care Center. Tori, thanks so much for following that story for us. In news across the country, the Trump administration issued a new rule that will ban people from applying for asylum in the United States if they travel through another country first. Republicans and Democrats, of course, arguing over the issue, continuing to point fingers as the amount of cases stacks up. So here to talk about it all with us is Brandon Darby. He runs Cartel Chronicles at Breitbart. It's a project to give a voice to Mexican journalists in cartel-controlled regions along the border. We've spoken with you before of what you do, such an interesting perspective. You spend a lot of time down there on the border. So from what you can tell, will this change in asylum restrictions? Will it be a fix? Will it cause more harm? What's your take? I think in the long run it would work, but I think that we'll see We'll see judges block it. We'll see a fight against it. You know, the ACLU and other groups have already filed lawsuits. Uh, they're trying to stop that, you know. Um, but I think that if it, if it were to stay in place, it would work. It would reduce numbers and it would reduce the, the crisis on the border. Um, but I don't think it's going to stay in place. So, you know, obviously this is a highly politicized issue, the asylum changes, but also just the border controversy in general. You see it from a very human perspective, boots on the ground. Tell us what you're seeing. What's the most important issue at the border right now? Well, I think people need to understand that the majority of our border, especially in Texas, is controlled by cartels. It's controlled by cartels and people can't cross without paying cartels. So we're actually in an effort to be nice to people and to be kind uh, and be a country that is welcoming to people fleeing. Um, we're actually fueling the very groups that people are trying to get away from in the first place. So I haven't seen a significant amount of change. The Border Patrol agents have better morale under Trump than they did previously. They feel more supported, but, but they're also more overwhelmed, right? So I really haven't seen significant change in the way things are done on the border uh, between administrations. The reality is, is that both parties, um, I guess this is political, but it's, it's, uh, I think it's fair. Both parties have had ample opportunities to do things, to change our asylum laws, to address thing, issues on the border. 
and both parties have kicked the can down the road. The Republicans just had two years where they controlled everything, not without some Democrat support, but they controlled everything. In 2009 and 10, the, the Democrats controlled everything. So both sides could resolve the issue, and uh, both sides are not doing so. And I know, you know, something that is really in your wheelhouse you've been writing about for years. Let's talk cartels, of course. This week, El Chapo, the infamous drug lord, being sentenced to life plus 30 years. Uh, how big a deal is that sentencing, or is it just a drop in the ocean of what you see down there? Um, I think it's, okay, so when we're talking about cartels and the problems, you're talking about an overall network of people, right? You're talking about politicians bankers, diplomats, and the drug dealer, right, who's the, the bad guy that gets all the attention. So when El Chapo gets busted, they just put in another bad guy. Uh, so really we, really, we really need to go after the entire network to, make, to have an effect, not only on Mexico, but on our own communities and the impact that cartels are having here. Uh, and we're not doing that as a country. You know, you have to remember the majority of politicians in Mexico are connected to drug cartels. So if you push too hard on drug cartels, you, you have diplomatic problems with Mexico. So one of the bigger problems right now is that we're putting diplomacy over law enforcement priorities. So does the El Chapo sentencing really matter? Symbolically, but it, that's all it really is. Now, last question for you here today. A lot of what you do is tracking those networks really right here into Texas and then further up into the United States. Um, what do you believe is the best way to stop some of those networks that are causing a lot of these issues? Well, what we do is we use human sources and advanced technologies to identify cartel networks, to map them out. Uh, we then share that information with law enforcement agencies, and when law enforcement agencies don't prioritize that, we then use the power of media to embarrass them into going after them. I think that's a very effective strategy. I, I wish more people did it. Um, you know, government can only do so much, and it requires people outside of government to hold government accountable. Most of the men and women in law enforcement, as you know, are doing the best job they can. They're simply overwhelmed with this issue. So having citizens that help and try to support that and try to share information is really, I think, the most effective thing that we can do. You know, a lot of times we're afraid, people are scared of drug cartels, but what we've shown is that they're really tough in Mexico where people can't fight back, but they're not so tough here. When people stand up to them, it hurts them. So if people want to find your work, where can they find you? Uh, the best place is on Breitbart.com, or they can follow me on Twitter, at Brandon Darby, and uh, see all of our articles. Brandon Darby, I'm sure this is not going to be the last time we have you on, but thanks so much for joining us Thank today. You. Yeah, so that brings us straight to our poll question for the day. Do you think restricting these asylum laws will help fix the crisis at the border? Yes or no? Talk to us on our KMAC Facebook page and online at everythinglubbock.com. Just click on Talking Points. Give us your opinion.